This is King Shul and I am the king. Just joking. Uh, for this problem, uh, we have to prove that this integral where there's f of x and there's f of a plus b minus x, these two are equal. And we will prove this by algebraic and geometric way. And also we will use uh, this property to solve some of the very difficult problems as well at the end. And we will see how this property can simplify some problems pretty much which may or may not be solved by other techniques. So let, let's see how uh, this is proved first and then we will apply it. We have integral from a to b of f of x dx. So if we just integrate this integral of f x is capital f x. Yeah, this is called antiderivative of f. And now this is capital f of b minus capital f of a. And now if we try to integrate this as well, we will get the same answer. Let's see how f of a plus b minus x dx. Now if we integrate this, we will have capital F of a plus b minus x by, since the x has a coefficient minus 1, we will divide by coefficient of x. Yeah. And from a to b. Now let's take minus 1 common. And at b, b b cancel out, so we have capital F a minus at a, a cancel out, we have capital F b. Now if we multiply by minus 1, we will have capital F of B minus capital F of A. So you see, in both the ways, we have the same answer. That implies that the question is also equal. Yeah, so both of them are all equal because their answers are equal. So th this is the algebraic proof. Yeah, now let's go to geometric proof. The geometric proof, we will need to draw, we need to be drawing graphs. First of all, well, let me start with uh, a graph that represents integral from a to b of f of x dx. So let me draw this graph. Over here there's a, there's b and let this be something like this. So this is our f of x. And this is the area that this integral represents. Now let us shift this graph to f of minus x. Yeah. If if we have to draw f of minus x, uh, now how the function f of minus x? How do we draw that? Yeah. If there's negation in x coordinate in in x value, then the graph can be reflected in y axis. So it's equivalent to reflecting the graph of uh, f of x in y axis. Then we get graph of f of minus x. So that area will now be equals to integral from minus a to minus b and the function will be something like this. So that area will now be equals to this. Yeah. If the, and this is the graph of f of minus x. Now again we, uh, we still have some more transformations to make. Yeah. And now we need to draw graph of f of minus x plus a plus b. This is actually equals to f of, if you take minus common, this is x minus a plus b. Yeah. yeah. And, and whenever there's uh, like something subtracted from x coordinate, the graph will shift by that value to the positive x-axis. So that's from the transformation of graphs. Yeah. So some, if something is subtracted from x, we have to shift by that value to the positive x-axis. So using that, uh, this graph, if we add a plus b to minus b, uh, this point will go to a and this point will go to b. Yeah. So it will be something like this, uh, the graph Okay, so this graph will be shifted yeah, and this point uh, will be shifted to A. Yeah, because a minus B plus A plus B will be A. Yeah, so we will have this point in A and minus A plus A plus B is B. So in B, we will have this point, this one. And so we will, this will just be here. 
Okay, let me let me make it more better. So this is something like this, uh, and this will be something like this. Okay, not still mid. Okay, so this is this area. Yeah. Okay. Now, now let me show you. Okay. So now. You all of you surely agree that this area is equal to this area. Yes, because this is the same function and it's also going from minus a to minus p. This is going from a to b. So by common sense like or just by seeing also, you do know that uh, these two areas are equal because this is just going in right direction and this is going left direction but the area covered is equal yeah and again now this and this area are also equal do you agree with me because we are just shifting all of the graphs to some step to the right yeah basically these uh, the shape of graph and the width none of them are changed because we have just transformed the graph by a plus b uh, yeah by a plus b value so now this area and this area are equal and this area and this area are equal so basically a is equals to b b is equal to so c that implies a equals to c now this area is integral from a to b of f of um, a plus b minus x dx and this area is equals to integral from um, minus b to minus a of f of minus x dx and this area is integral from a to b of f of x dx so these two are equal and these two are equal so that's why we can say that first and third are also equal so integral from a to b of f of x dx is equals to integral from a to b of f of a plus b minus x dx so I hope you understood about how we transform the graph. Yeah, so how this was just reflection and the area would be same. And this was just transformation and the area would be same. So that's why the initial area and last area are also same. I hope you understood this. And this is the geometric proof. Now after this, let's look at some usage. So first of all, let me show you one easy usage that could be solved without King's rule as well. And then after that, I will show you one very difficult problem which can be made easy by King's rule. First of all, let us solve this problem. Integral from a 0 to 3 of 3 minus x whole square dx. Or let's say it's from 1 to 2. Let's say the integral is from 1 to 2. Now, uh, for this also, it's not that hard. But... If you just apply King's rule and instead of x, if you write out a 1 plus 2 minus x, it will be more easy. Square dx. Integral from 1 to 2, this is 3 minus 3 plus x whole square dx. And 3, 3 cancel out. Integral from 1 to 2 of x square dx. And this is, now this is so easy. x cubed by 3 yeah from 1 to 2 and that's 8 by 3 minus 1 by 3 that's 7 by 3 so this was one use of king's rule but it was it could be solved without king's rule as well now let's look at next problem yeah let's say we have this integral integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sin x by sin x plus cos x dx yeah. Now for this problem, if we let i as this integral, then i will also be equal to integral. If we use King's rule, we can have uh, 0 plus pi by 2 minus x in place of x. So that gives us cos x over here. And over the here, pi by 2 minus x is cos x. Pi by 2 minus x will be sin x. Now, if we add these two, we will have integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sin x plus cos x by sin x plus cos x now see how easy has it become this has become really easy now our 2i will be integral from 0 to pi by 2 of 1 dx now there is nothing to do in this integral 
everyone can do that even the beginner can do that this is x from 0 to pi by 2 so that's 2i equals to pi by 2 minus 0 that's pi by 2 and that gives us i equals to pi by 4 and that's the answer answer is pi by 4 so in some cases like this uh, king's rule can be helpful now I will, I will leave you a problem yeah I try to solve this integral integral from 0 to pi not solve try to prove this property f of sin x dx is equals to pi by 2 integral from 0 to pi by 2 of f of sin x dx this lemma can be easily proved using king's rule and i want you to try and if you are not able to i do have a solution in my channel of this yeah and you can just search uh, uh, for this uh, problem i have this problem in the thumbnail itself and you will be able to find that yeah but if you just try by yourself oh, this is not pi by 2 this is pi itself sorry for that this is pi yeah, fine now uh, this is not that hard to prove if you just try using king's rule mm, yeah let, let this say as i and uh, you will also find another i using king's rule and just try to manipulate these two i and you will be able to prove that i is also equals to this thing over here yeah so try that and hope you enjoyed this session proving king's rule and some uses of king's rule and this was a nice little uh, proof uh, both of them and also nice little usage and nice little problem hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos too